Hi guys, it's Watonia Yancy and you're welcome to the Baby Talk Show. On today's episode, I have a beautiful, amazing lady. Now, there's something about her that is so amazing that her videos are everything. It just makes you happy, lifts up your mood and all of that. She's a wife, a mother, an actress, brand influencer. It doesn't stop there. She's also Ministress of Happiness. <laughs> Let's go and drum rolls for Marianne Osabo here. Yes. I give mother the name. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's good to have you here. Thank you. No. So how have you been? Very well. Thank you. You look beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I see there's a baby on the way too. Yes, we thank God for that. <laughs> How old is your son? I know you okay. have a son. Okay, Leon, he's, he's a year and six months now. The year and six months. <laughs> okay, what's his? Is he in okay. crutch? Yes, he's in crutch. He just had a crutch because, you know, dealing with pregnancy and having a very small child, it's quite. I don't know if it's demanding and stressful, so I just had to. I wanted to wait for him till he gets to two years, but the whole thing became too much, so I just started crutch for him. Yeah. So he's in crutch now. It's interesting how you mix the whole brand influencing. I see how you go all out for <laughs> all those brands, and then the acting, your yeah. TikTok videos. Yes. Then the. Yeah. How are you mistress of happiness? Let me ask. Okay, at first, you know my personal life is inspiring to everyone because if you've been following me from the scratch then you can understand why the, why the whole happiness has to come because i've gone through a whole lot medically so now it's a miracle that i'm still here so one has to be happy one has to be joyful because it was not an easy journey so that <laughs> okay um 20 i can't remember the year again because you know when pain goes you tend to forget until maybe something similar happened then you now remember oh i think i've experienced this mm -hmm. so sometime i think 2010 if i'm correct so i started with a very tiny wound on my index finger so but with time it progressed and you know we africans or nigerians at first we don't rush to the hospital up until now so we just treat with our own knowledge my parents were like oh it's with low it will go and but i was working as a then i was also schooling but with time the whole thing got really bad and i said i told my parents i wanted to go to the hospital Sorry, schooling uni or? i enjoy still of journalism oh, yes yeah, so um I told my parents I wanted to go to the hospital because it was looking like nothing was going to happen because the hand just kept on deteriorating, getting worse. So what was it exactly? Was it swelling or was it? Um, it was swollen, mm -hmm. and I had like an ulcerated wound that didn't heal for years. Was so it painful? Very painful. So then it started bleeding from that point. So after that after i went to the hospital we did a very serious major surgery to correct because later found that i had a malformation that i was born with but normally those malformation are not supposed to come out until probably when you're 19 or 18 so it depends it differs you're not that age at that time. i was okay. so it started when i got that age so after the my first surgery which was supposed to be successful and came out unsuccessful the whole thing got really bad i went i went home so people and um, friends families decided suggesting to go for herbal stuff like maybe spiritual attack somebody's trying to kill me maybe i shake somebody you know so many back and forth so i just i'm this person i like medical i like i believe so much in medicine but because of the whole pressure was just too much on try how about try so we just had to try that's one experience i don't wish on anybody in fact hmm, that i didn't die at that as at that time it was just the grace of god you know this how about people they will just peel off the whole thing pour alcohol you know do so many crazy things but we thank God. After a while, I said, I told my parents, I don't want to continue with the herbal stuff because it was not yielding any results. Mm -hmm. Then that was how we started medical again. 
had so many other surgeries after it. it was not just one. Not one. I think I had seven surgeries in total until 2019. 2018, I told my parents, because uh, I went to India and I came back with the hope. You know, everyone thinks when you go to India, your problems are solved, you'll be fine. But when I came back, it was like I came back times two. As at that time, they've already removed two of my fingers. I had scars everywhere. I had, it was not something to even see. At the time, I thought, I sat myself down and I said, will I even be able to walk with this hand? Because... It's, it's far better being an amputee than you working and people are just staring at you because I had like so many because they had to cut flesh from my stomach to patch. So if there were patches, it wasn't that fine. So I sat down and told myself that I wanted to go for an amputation. My dad was crying because I happened to be the only girl. So I have like other um, three male siblings. So my dad was crying. No, no. How can a girl have this and that? Who's going to marry you? Blah, blah. I said at then I was dating my husband so I told him this is what I want to do whatever happens if at the end you want to leave fine but I'm bent on keeping myself because it's more like I had to save myself as at that time I had to save myself so my husband was super supportive he said he wanted to tell me but he didn't know if I was going to accept that he wanted me to go for an amputation so 2019 january i had the amputation like it felt like you know when they just you know when you give birth that moment that relief i felt relieved and i wished i had done it like so many years ago instead of me going through all those series of pains torture and also after that i got married my husband stayed all those people they were like oh even the doctors were like are you sure? Because I told them, I took myself to the hospital and I said I wanted an amputation. They're like, are you sure? Fine girl like you, we can try to solve it. I was more like a test, test a uh, lab rat. So I was tired. So I told him, I told the doctor, no, I wanted to go for an amputation. So but the final amputation was in Lagos. Yes, Nigeria. was in Lagos. Yes, was in Lagos. And was like the best time of my life. It didn't normally when you go for amputation surgeries because I met other people there. You had to stay like a month or two. They had to counsel you. But I didn't even need any counseling because it was something I wanted. So like three to four days, I was fine. And even the doctors were like, there was no need keeping me here. That like, I'm, I'm free to go. So that was how the whole journey of being an amputee started. And mind the fact that you don't allow it to limit you. Like you're it's still like... It's okay. I'm, it's still me. I'm still like, you're not allowing it to limit you. Like, yes. you're not allowing or making yourself look like you're a special person. Mm -mm. So people need to treat you specially. You're just acting like, okay, you're a normal person too. And people treat me like a normal person too. <laughs> but I admire the fact that your husband stayed. That's very yes. admirable. Because yes. I was going to go to that. And then you now said, oh, you told him. I was like, okay, nice. <laughs> so now, you know, and then you talked about how he's your son Neil, Neil? leon leon yes you talked about how he's in crash now yes so now actually our topic for today is house help versus crash okay so first i want to ask you well already you've answered but mm -hmm. if you have the option of house help or crash what will you go for and why personally me i wanted a house help. i wanted somebody to at least assist with chores at home but you know the Nigeria of today, we don't know who to trust. Like, yeah. you know, you bringing somebody to come and stay with you permanently in your house. And my husband is so against that with the whole stories we see. So me, personally, I would want, I would choose house help versus crutch. I would over crutch. When the house help is there, she assists me. In, you know, when you have like extra hand, then there are so many things I don't have to do. Then I can concentrate more on him but since there's no help he has to go to school he has to. let's look at the advantages of each okay so house help now you mentioned how you do so much to trust but okay if you had to go for a house help what will you look at what are the factors is he an older person is he young the one that's going to school you have to pay for school fees or no me personally i don't mind paying for school fees it's just it's just going to look like me training someone else's child like my own way of supporting another family 
So I would not go for someone too old, no. Okay. Just like what age? Like let's say fifteen. Okay. Fifteen okay. is better. Then the crush. What don't you like about crush? Crutch. If at all, or you're fine with crutch. I'm fine with crutch for now. You know no, no, no complaints. No, for now. You know, there's the time. Like, the okay, time what time does it close from crutch? Close by you? three. I I wish they can keep him there till six. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> when I was taking my sons, although they close by seven. Seven in the evening. Seven p.m. Yes. But most times, as a mom, even if they close late, you be like, you can't leave your son there. There. No, you mm. can't. The house help one, you're training this person. Mm. Do you think the person will have time to go to school and still do house chores? When it comes to chores in my own household, mm. for now we are just me, my husband, and my son. There's no much work. You just, because now we have someone that comes in and does the sweeping twice in a week, like mm. to mop, to assist, to wash some clothes and all. I just got the lady but she doesn't stay she comes just twice and goes so if i have like a stay in help like permanent stay it's just going to look as if i have my sister at home with me so it's not like i'm going to tell her to mop the house every day every hour yeah. so we have like time like she has to go to school fine you wake up you do the dishes you bake my son just feel me just as if you're living in your house but yeah, I guess. But you don't do a nine to five. You're usually at home. I'm always at home. So all you do is the influencing, at the home, acting, yes, videos at, at home. home. Yes. So it actually still, I understand. It works if there's a staying person, person yes. other than the crush. Yes. But now you're going for the crush because you don't trust people. people. Yes. Yeah. But have you tried to even get one that you can trust? Because that's the thing. Like, you know, it's not my decision. Yeah. Like, it's not my decision alone. Yeah. Because yeah. I know people that have done it. Yeah. Like, they have tried it. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not my decision alone. I have a husband, so he also because my husband is very supportive. He's like, okay, anything you want to do. I'll do it for you because I don't cook. I've never cooked. Not that I've never cooked, but cooking is not my job in my house. Not that I can't, but it's my husband's job. He took it upon himself to do the cooking from A to Z. I just do just few maybe noodles or maybe I want to eat rice or maybe just few things that I want. But if it's like a family food, my husband does the cooking. So the cooking aspect has been solved. So the other aspect has to do with the mopping the washing and all that which we now got someone to do nice the minister minister of happiness anyone <laughs> minister of happiness <laughs> why minister of happiness um because i get lots of dms every day i'm just basically just living my life i'm just walking people through my journey yeah. so i'm just doing me it's not played it's not forged it's not filmed like whatever i put out there it's basically what is actually happening in my house it's not scripted except maybe normal tiktok dance and all but every other aspect you see it's and basically you your husband, <laughs> so, so it's basically what's happening in my house so people always come to me and tell me i love what you're doing i love what you you know you inspire me you're making me happy so it's not every time you hear sad story sad story mm -hmm. sad story so sometimes we should just smile and be happy so that's why i just felt like okay i think i'm portraying this happiness so everyone has to be happy so that's why i give myself I say you actually are. <laughs> now last question before we run out the segment mm. do you have or are there people that are also amputated that reach out to you that are like oh what do i do a like lot advice, a lot like a lot every day they reach out to me so i have few friends not that like we are very close but we are close on the internet a lot of amputees a lot reach out to me and you know share ideas i try to encourage them because it's easy for me it's not always easy for every other person my struggle is quite different from yours some were born amputees some had accidents some but mine had to be like okay it's a sickness and that was the only choice I had. So I just had to encourage them. It's not the end of the world. Continue to live your life. There's a better future. They complain about their spouses or their relationship and all. You know, just keep on it. I just kept on encouraging them. Are there cases where they said their spouse left or person Yes, the yes. Story? There was a particular lady that reached out to me and she said her husband was at first nice, that she was okay. Then along the line, she had an amputation, and so the husband just 
change and so whenever she sees me and my husband doing what we do she feels like why can't her husband act like this and that the husband is tired of her that she wants to leave the relationship because he now treats her so and she has a child already so all i could do was just to encourage her because there was no point saying where you're not loved when you're not wanted and when you're being on top one hand they'll see they beat you on top mm -mm. so i just had to encourage her to make the right decision i can't tell you to leave but just make the right decision i think the sad part is how it starts from like one part yes to... yes yeah guys that's it on this segment but i want you to see how encouraging Marianne's story is I, for one, didn't think she had to go through that, like from the fingers and all of that. You're very strong. Thank you. I admire that. So that's it on this segment. We'll be right back. So here we go. Did you promise yourself you will not have another child? Well, no, because you have the second one coming. <laughs> Did you scream CS please while you're having your first child? No. Did you think you would die while in labor? No. Was your labor induced? No. Did you have anyone with you in the labor ward? No. Did you know the sex, gender of your baby before delivery? Yes. Did you cry, scream, shout while in labor? Yes. Which of them? Oh. Oh. Okay. Yes. Did you insult anyone, your doctor? No. No. Did you pass out? No. Did you poop while in labor? No. <laughs> no. Okay. I think we have one to go. Now. On a scale of 1 to 10, how scared, confused were you when you realized you were pregnant? Mm, how scared? 7. Ten being, so you are very scared. Yes, I was scared. Why were you scared? Because I had a wedding to plan and I was already pregnant. So. When? How many months old? Two, Three months pregnant when I found out I was already pregnant. That's it on this segment. We'll be right back. segment because I love to hear what my guests think about what's your take on now on this what's your take on topic for this episode it's on Mugu. Oh, Mugu. Okay. yes so what's your take on Mugu? before you explain is there an English English name for Mugu? I don't know I've been trying to figure out <laughs> and I'm like I don't think I don't think there's an English name because everybody knows it as Omogo. and Omogo is an Igbo name yeah? yes an Igbo, an Igbo word yes so what's your take on that? Uh, Omugo is very important because when you give birth, you can't do it all alone. In fact, that time it's one crazy time that you need all the assistance in this world. Because when I first had my son, hmm, I was looking so skinny. My eyes were po almost popping out because first we were so excited. Oh, we're having a baby. But when the baby came, Jesus sleepless nights i have videos on my phone that sometimes when i go through them i'm like jesus am i going to go through this again because we had sleepless night my husband was very slim he was also making his mother hey he likes children he can play with children he loves children when the baby came 
uncle was literally crying every night <laughs> so omogo i think it's very important like if you can have somebody you need all the supports all the assistance yeah. from washing to nursing to in fact we we mothers after childbirth we need rest we yeah. need rest so omogo your parents your parents are not available at least well, yours are available my, yeah, I had to that? stay with my parents oh. then. I had to stay because it's like... Like how long? I stayed with my parents for like close to three months. months. But usually, how long do they go say Omoko? I think six Omoko. months. No, Omoko is three, three months. months. Yes, oh. three months. Yes. So I stayed with them close. Not exactly three months, but two months and some weeks. So before I went back to my husband's house. But their house isn't far from yours and it's Lagos, yeah? Yes, in Lagos, but it's far, but it's still in Lagos. Okay. So Mogo is important. So are we planning on Mogo for? Yeah, my mom has to come over this time around because it's but just. But then again, Mogo does it have to be your mom or dad? Can't it be a friend, a sister, a close friend? Like you have three or two brothers, a brother. What what, what can a guy do? <laughs> I was waiting for that. But still, I don't think that's the thing about Mogo. Yeah, I think we limit it to my mom must come or my mother-in-law, my father-in-law. That's why I because asked. because they have that experience children already mm -hmm. so that's why an elderly person this might not be your mom though but at least because my mom for example now she's scared of babies like because of that cord stuff so I was of the weight. no no because of the, weight. the cord like she's scared she can't bake babies until yeah, that thing falls off so then she had to, we had to bring someone else to bake the baby for like a week until that thing went off before she can now handle beating him so that's why i said it has to be someone experienced you know babies are very small very fragile so you can't ask a guy it's not as if guys can't do it there are some experienced men as well but yeah. it's basically a woman's field I like that word, experience. so that's why so my husband started baiting my son when we got home three months because i didn't bait him until seven or six months if i'm correct so my husband was doing the bathing until he got bigger for me to handle so if you can have your parents fine if you can have other person other people around you but if you can do it because i know people that can do it like they can nurse themselves mm -hmm. throughout the whole process without, without help. help if you can do it fine but if you just i'm just saying that you, sh you need help mm -hmm. you can't do it all that time is one crazy time that you need all the assistance you can get let me ask some questions that happen around that Omogo period. Okay. You've just given birth, mm. and then there's the hot water system down on hot, hot water. water. Mm. There's the time hot towel on your stomach. Then there's taking hot food. Food, pepper yes, pepper soup. soup. Um, hot milo, maybe. Yes, tea. Yeah, and you all. did all that. Yes, I did all that. How long did you do the sitting down on hot water for? Oh, that sitting down. And I then ha describe how it's like, because, okay, like, okay, let me describe mine. I used like a paint bucket kind of bucket. Yes. Then a lot of hot water and I sat on it. Mm. Yes. So like the vapor was was going in. Yes. I think that's the style. That, oh. <laughs> that's the main style. So I maybe they could just add detail and yes, yes. That's in town. So what of the time? I didn't really tie because immediately I started with training. Okay. I started with training. So it? yes, I don't know, but I did. I was trained. Not immediately, but I restrained like a month after, so I didn't really tie. I didn't, I didn't really tie at all. all. Some people tie hot water, towel hot water. Some tie wrapper. But I know of the wrapper, mm -hmm. but I didn't do the whole. But the thing about the hot water towel it gives like marks. I didn't try any of them though. But I don't know. I didn't try it. So hot water, don't. then the hot food. Yes, pepper soup. That's one thing I'm looking up to now. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dreaming that. of the whole pepper soup, yes. So what of water? Some people take hot water. Hot water, so yes. Want to drink Normal water, water, you don't take cold water. Do you know that? Yes, my mom was monitoring me like I can't take normal water. Everything has to be hot, 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 hot. I had to sneak out of times, try and drink cold water and come back. Cold water. Not really cold, but something normal. Because you know when you're taking warm water, just water. Mm. It has this taste and this feeling, mm. so at the time I got tired, I had to just sneak out and go and drink normal water and came back. So were you taking minerals and all that after giving birth? No. Did no. you breastfeed exclusively? 
I breastfed exclusively for four months, but this time around, I'm not sure. Does it have to do with the weight you lost? Because you said you lost a lot of weight. One thing about that I've noticed about my own pregnancy, you know, other people when they are pregnant, they have big nose, big feet, big whatever, they'll be fat. Yeah. Mind the only way you can tell I'm pregnant is I will just drop. Like I'm not normally not like this, but I will just drop drastically and you can easily guess maybe she's pregnant. But from my facial look, you cannot tell. So maybe after three months after my child, then my weight then starts coming back, which I like, which I love. So for the weight stuff, uh, it depends on your body depends on your body that's what i'll say it depends on your body that's why i said some persons when they are pregnant they get really fat or when uh, when they give birth they now come back to their size or some get really slim then later get chubby sorry last question overall okay you breastfed yes. but that exclusive breastfeeding was like four months four months but you are still breastfeeding not exclusively yes yes when did you stop completely? when i found out i was pregnant again oh. So guys, this episode has been interesting. You're out there and you tie your tummy with toil. Share with us. Do you have those tummy marks and all of that? That's it on this segment. We'll be right back. interesting parts games time you know we start with gender games so there's a baby on the way but well, let's see what um baby talk show thinks <laughs> Marianne's gender or baby will be baby. Baby twins boys okay. girls don't tell us let's see look away okay. look away <laughs> okay so if it's blue it's a boy if it's yellow it's a twins okay this pink is a girl okay it's a girl for you though. It's a boy. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell us. I know soon we will not put the gender. Don't tell us. No. Uh -huh. Soon. I'll keep it. <laughs> Maybe the boy will be after. I want. I want it to be a girl. Okay. But now, here are words like parenting terms. I want you to pick any two and tell us at least a sentence about it. At least, if you're not able to. Thank you know how you water yet. You're going to have to gulp everything. Ha. So, here you go. One, another one. Okay. So she picked what? Breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And ovulation. I'm ovulating. Okay. <laughs> I'll take that. Okay. Let's be to you pick another one. Let's <sighs> ovulation. Okay. Adoption. Okay. Let's see. Say, what comes to your mind when you think of adoption? Adoption is good. Okay. Breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Drum roll! Oh, Mary mm. Okay, so guys, I particularly enjoyed this episode. I didn't plan to actually ask you. But when you now said something that prompted me to ask, okay, sh do you like do you like to share it? And you share it. I appreciate that you shared it, and I hope that, and I know that you touch lives out there, and I, I hope what you said today will touch even more lives out there. And I hope those that are reaching out to you, it's not like, ah, oh, these people. Does it sometimes does it tire you? It's like, mm, I'm, I think I'm kind of used to it. Okay, fair enough. And that's it on today's episode of the Baby Talk Show. 
I particularly enjoyed myself in the Ministries of Happiness. Now remember, there is no such thing as being a perfect parent. Just be a real one. Until next time, bye guys.